Michaels. I saw that you were quoting um, McKinsey and Company, and 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 this is a number I just pulled from you: seventy percent of all change initi initiatives fail. Fail. So, yes. So why? Yeah. How? That's well, crazy. Exactly. So they the, the McKinsey statistics are that seventy percent of change efforts fail to achieve their targeted results. So maybe they kind of get there, or it takes longer, or they fail outright. But seventy percent, and they say that the two main reasons are lack of employee buy-in and lack of management support, which is why I wanted to get underneath it. It's like, why are people not changing? Why are they not adopting the change? You know. So, so here's what I found out about why change is so hard. I really, I'm a big student of history and I started thinking about this and it's like, okay, let's think about history. And if you think about it clearly until really recently, the life of a single human being did not change very much, right? So if you're 100 years ago, if your dad was a farmer, you're probably a farmer. If your dad was a pipe fitter, you're probably a pipe fitter. You grew up in the same town that your parents grew up in. You might have grown up in the same house that your parents grew up in. If you went to school, you went to the same school that your parents did, that your children would. Life until fairly recently was fairly unchanging. And when there was a change, it was generally a bad thing and a threat. It was a famine or it was a war or it was a plague. And so there's a concept called homeostasis that means returning to stable conditions for survival. And so we think of that mostly physiologically. You're too cold, you put on some clothes, you're too hot, you get in the air conditioning, you're hungry, you eat, you wanna come back to what feels comfortable. But until very recently, homeostasis was an important and self-protective urge also sociologically and economically and organizationally and politically to come back to a previous known condition was generally the way to go because change was dangerous and threatening, right? Right. So that's how we're wired for thousands of years to think of danger when we see a change. So I thought, oh my God, no wonder change is so hard. It has always been hard. It's, and we're now suddenly in this era where we don't really have that option because change comes at us every day. I mean, forget the pandemic, change comes every day. And this has never been our experience as humans. So in a way we need to rewire ourselves so that when a change comes at us, our first uh, stance is neutral versus negative. We don't automatically, we don't have to automatically assume the change is gonna be good because some, some changes are bad, but we, we can no longer afford to automatically assume that change is dangerous and a threat, which is what we have assumed historically.